here today. Thank you for your grace and mercy, and help us to do your will today. Amen. Sing this praise song for all time.
we're so glad to see you here visiting with us today. And I'm sure you can thank our guest for him. And please do come back. God bless you. We're going to run out. I'm so grateful for you. And we're so grateful for all of our members here today, those we haven't seen for a bit. We're so glad you guys came back. God is so good, and he's really, he's good, and he's soon to come. And we all want to be ready. Praise the Lord. At this time, we'll have our prayer. Kind, gracious Heavenly Father who art in heaven, we're so grateful and so thankful to be here in your house today. And we ask you to please bless us equally, Lord, and speak abundantly. Lord, we know that you are soon coming, and we all want to be ready. We want to be singing that song, I'm a child of the king. Glory, hallelujah, I'm a child of the king. God bless all of you, please. Good morning. It is now time for our offering call. Um, last week, we missed an update, but uh, it's a little sketchy you get with your bulletin and how to update and everything on it. All bills are paid for this month, so uh, that's a very good thing. They can keep the doors open. So... Son of honor his father and a slave his master. If then I am his father, where is the honor to me? If I am a master, where is the respect to me? Says the Lord Almighty. We worship God with our tithe and offering in response to the call to acknowledge him as master. Acknowledging the real master can sometimes be a struggle. Captain of the ship looked into the night and saw faint light in the distance. Immediately he told the signalman to send a message, alter your course to 10 degrees south. Promptly a return message was received, alter your course 10 degrees north. The captain was angry. His command had been ignored, so he sent a second message, alter your course 10 degrees south. I am the captain. Soon another message was received. Alter your course, alter your course to ten degrees north. I am Seaman Third Class Jones. Immediately the captain sent a third message, knowing the fear it would invoke. Alter your alter your course ten degrees south. I am a battleship. Then the reply came. Alter your course ten degrees north. I am a lighthouse. Acknowledging the one in charge, the real Lord is always with you. For this reason, Malachi appealed to God's people to return and acknowledge him as master. Hearing the call, the people responded in Malachi 3, 7. How are we to return? In response, the Lord reminded his people that they had departed from him by robbing him in tithes and offerings. Each time we consider money as our source of status, protection, security, and even love, we elevate it to the rank of Lord in the place of the real Lord. We allow money to compete with God for the position of Lord. <coughs> the system of tithing was established to acknowledge God as Lord and Master. This week, let us not miss the opportunity of reiterating our confession of God's lordship by worshiping him with our tithes and regular offerings. So let's all remember, God gave us what we have. So it's, it's our duty to give back a portion of what he has given to us so that uh, our churches and pastors especially can be helping other people around the world, not only here, but all around the world. So let's all bow our heads in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and the blessings you've given us. 
we thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us, even without our asking. And, Lord, we ask that you remind us to always remember you and give back a portion of what you have given to us. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. morning is one that I would like <clears throat> all of us to have a heart in. I want you to think about food and imagine if you were part of it, what you would be thinking, what you would be feeling, and how you would have reacted in the situation that you found. The story can be found in Luke chapter 23, and Stephen is going to talk about the story a little bit, but I wanted to give you this story, and he's not going to have time to tell you the whole story, so that we can be fresh in our mind this story. It happened after Jesus had already been crucified, and they were instructed to to stay together. And two disciples decided to walk on water. They might have come mostly fresh from Jerusalem and out of there. As far as I know, it's down to it. And so here they are, walking on the sea. And we would have a very similar story, um, probably not quite as funny. <laughs> um, they were walking. And... The Bible tells us that they were walking and can you tell when someone is tired just by looking at them? Are they all happy with their heads up and, and their eyes up? Or are they kind of like aloof and looking down? And Jesus kind of made it clear how they were walking. Because he says, what manner of communications are these that you have one with another as you walk and are glad? So he, he was very clear about their attitude. And they were walking along and talking to each other about all that had just happened. And of course, they're surprised that the third person stands in with them and says, what on earth are you talking about? Why are you guys so sad? But they were. And they were like, you, have you not been around here that you don't know what happened? How Jesus was treated and crucified and we thought he was going to be the, the Lord. And so they had this false idea that the Messiah was going to come and they were going to be kings of the world again. And then all of a sudden, he's dead and in a tomb. And that's not what they thought was supposed to happen, should they have known. But they, they just didn't criticize him like they had in the garden. And they said that their perception of all that had to be done. And then after listening to them and letting them, let off their steam about all the harm that had happened. He said something that I don't think that many of us would be able to say with our minds. So fool. And the disciples were like, we don't know what he's meant to say. But you know, these people did not know what was going to happen. And the Bible tells us this too. The Bible as it was at that time, beginning with Moses and the prophets, he founded them and taught them everything that they were meant to know. Walk in fear and in faith. And they still didn't know what he meant. They kept walking. They got to Emmaus and they didn't feel like that book because they were just so involved in listening to what Jesus was telling them. 
Komm nur ein. Wir sind Freunde. Und du bist auch sogar noch von vier Minuten Freunde. And they were friends. Three minutes. Five minutes. Now, when you invite Google in, did he ever knock them in? No. So he he came in and he was going to sup with them. And they were getting ready to have their supper. And he said, and the guy said, he said, no way. He had put a stick up to them. And he disappeared once they realized who he was. Now, I asked you at the beginning to imagine what would they be asking. If you were sitting at that table after all that had happened on the floor and you saw it and you knew it was him, what would your reaction be? Would you still be sad? No, I I know. You would be. I cannot imagine those two men sitting at that table <laughs> and not reacting some way emotionally. I'm sorry. After all of that emotion that they expressed, they would react emotionally. I know women are a little more emotional. But he said, and they said to each other, calmed your heart down in years? Did we discover something amazing in the kitchen? What we thought was a a display in the offering happened to us in here. And this wasn't the result in Jerusalem, but we don't think they started at the beginning of the day and it was blossoming. And this time, instead of going downhill, it went uphill. They were in The Bible doesn't even tell us if they stopped for supper. I know personally, if it was me at that table, I wouldn't be hungry anymore. (laughs) And I'm sure that they got up immediately and said, we got to tell somebody. We got to go and tell those disciples they were just so close. We got to let them know. We know he has risen. And it says the same found the eleven gathered together with them to be with him, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. So the disciples already had seen somebody in that group had already seen and then two more people come and they saw him appear. Can you imagine the kind of festive air it would have been in that place? And then think in your mind, me when Jesus reveals himself to me the first reaction is I will worship you it is not fair that we take to heart the stories that God has given us in the Bible and allow our hearts to harden and then use that Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this day that you've given us. We pray in a special way that you would give us that day to rest, that we might want to understand with our hearts and our minds what you have done in the past so that we can trust you that you will do it. We give you praise. Still created in Samuel and in Paul and Luke, and it's real and it's alive. Take time to hold to it the way it comes.
that same day, two of them were being condemned for the murder and the seven men were dead. We were talking with each other and I asked her about Anthony and his wife and I looked at her and I asked her why he was dead and she told him what he had done in his life and she was such a lovely woman to me. She asked him what was the decision that led her to give up everything. I stood still and told her my name. One of her nuns created asked, are you in a magical situation? Do you not know the things that have happened to you in this world? She looked at me and I said, I know what you're talking about. Okay, we have heard in this facility, we are going to talk about the Let's open our Bibles to Luke chapter 24. The story begins with two sad men walking to a little town. They find two sad laborers eagerly collecting ashes and leaving his sad job by them. Which man first and second was sad? Then the ashes fell. Um, let's go to verse 18. Luke 24, verse 18. whose name was Cleopas answered and said unto him, Art thou only a stranger and dwell with me, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? Art thou only a stranger and dwell with me, and hast not known the things which are come to pass in these days? And they proceeded to tell him about what was what had happened to them. What was this person that came to their need from the Lord's side? Now, chapter Luke chapter 24, verse 25. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. What await you before come? What would you do as strangers? You don't know till you do it. And slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. And now comes the as the truth of all things. What does this person do with me? Verse 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. He takes them to the scriptures to show them why these things are so. In my own Bible study, I have heard how the things of these prophets were coming to pass. They, like the stars, were seen to see it, but some of the many passages were spoken to led them to Jesus. If we read the rest of the story, we have shared with you to sad believers. You see, after they understood these prophecies, they went again to the Lord. Verse 32. They said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? Now turn to, in your Bibles, Numbers chapter 24, verse 7.
day I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and a Christ the throne of Moab, and the glory of the children of Jacob. Of all the places to come, our first prophecy may find its coming as the lips of a very interesting voice. He said these words. was Balaam. We know him to be a very unfaithful prophet, for he said these words by the word of the Lord God in dreams. Did it come true? Where did he say the Messiah would come from? Far out of Jacob and the house of Judah. Turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew Chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, of Herod, the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Here we can see that in both accounts, these verses fulfill what Balaam said, what Balaam said would happen. Here we can also see a possible reason why God was withholding what Balaam registered this prophecy. You see, God knew that some future speaker for truth would see the prophecy being converted by the truth. Please hold your place to your back to these verses in your Bible. Where would Jesus be born? We have already read a verse in Matthew 7 and a little about his birth, but I would like to take you back to the Old Testament to get some more details. Turn in your Bibles to Micah 5, verse 2. Thou Bethlehem, Ephraim, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. So not only do we see the names of the city, but there are more details is a little strange. Turning back to Matthew chapter 2, we will start with verse 3 this time. We will start with verse 3 and then with verse 10. Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ would be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the 
country is due to out of reach help from our government that shall weary my people to death. Then Herod, Jonathan had crazily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they found on went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. So when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. Here we can see that the birth of Jesus bread and life had not been fulfilled. Now our next prophecy is how it was to come to pass. So the answer to this question need only about this is Isaiah chapter 7. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall, shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. So two things need to happen. A baby must be conceived from a virgin and have to be called Emmanuel. But it's amazing how we, when we turn to Matthew 121, let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 1, She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this is only that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the word by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Imagine God who loves us so much that when we come to be, when he comes to be with us, his name is called God with us. Okay, so far we see he is coming to Mary, being born in Bethlehem, and his mother is a virgin, and we have seen how all these things have happened. Next, his birth Let's open our William chapter 10.
Behold, upon the mountains the feet of him that brings good tidings, that publisheth peace. O you that keep thy solemn feast, that own thy vows, for the wicked it shall no more pass through you. He is utterly cut off. Here we are told that there will be feet on the mountains publishing good tidings of peace. Now let's turn our Bibles to Luke chapter 2, starting with verse 8, going to verse 11. country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ. There is no better news for a world lost in sin than to hear that a Savior has appeared. Good tidings of great joy. It is good news to you. If you have been, if you would have been there in those hills on that night, would it have been good news to you? Here we talk about the truth that there is a God so good that God knew and he made it clear that he had good and the bad before it happened. Let's turn our Bible. the Lord. A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rahul, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. In this verse, we see a word that is used, Rahul. At first glance, it seems strange what this word should appear here. Why this word should appear here? If we look in the Strong's Concordance, we find the word, the Hebrew number 7,254. And in the Hebrew dictionary in the back, it says, Ra, Kal, the same as 8, 7,253, Rachel, a wife of Jacob. So Rachel or Rachel weeping, and would not be comforted, that is clear. I wonder what was going to happen that would cause grief in that moment. So what happened, let us see in Matthew chapter 2, verse 16 to 18. Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men and exceeding wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and of all the coasts thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time 
which he had diligently inquired of the Lord. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Daniel the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a great great lamentation and weeping, and great mourning, for they still weeping for his children, and would not be comforted because they were not comforted. Herod got mad because his parents did they did not stay. In rage, he told his soldiers to kill all the boys from two years and under in the town of Bethlehem. What a terrible day that must have been. Something I would have torn from my heart. He ends the crying, but all went on so many innocent babies. That is what Satan enjoys, destruction. God knew that it was prophesied, so he himself didn't even think to think he still know he knows was still in control. Many more things were to happen. But in Zechariah nine nine it tells us about another one. Let's turn our Bibles to Zechariah chapter nine. Greatly, O daughter of Zion, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, thy king cometh unto thee, he is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the foal of a king and how he was going to come riding into Jerusalem riding on a donkey that had never been ridden before. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew 21 1 to 7. When they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethsaida, unto the Mount of Olives, they sent Jesus, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Lead them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught Unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send them. And all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. progresses, some really sad parts of the story are also prophesied. The fight in his home. Zechariah chapter 11 verses 12 and 13. Let's 
Jesus said unto them, If ye do good, give me my tithe, and if not, forbear. For if they wait for my tithe, they will be evil servant. And the Lord said unto him, Cast it into the bottom of goodly tithe that I will prize at of them. And I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the bottom in the house of the Lord. God is talking here. Wait for me, my tribe. So they weighed for me thirty pieces of silver, and I threw them into the potter in the house of the Lord. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 26, verses 14 and 15. the twelve called Judas Iscariot sent one of the chief priests and said unto them what will what will you give me and I deliver him unto you and they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver and they promised thirty pieces of silver as a price for his return so now let's Turn to Matthew 27, 3, 9, 10, 11. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? He bowed to them. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And the chief priests took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful for us to put it into the treasury because it is the price of blood and they took counsel and brought the horn the potter healed the blurry stranger saying therefore that field was called the field of blood then was fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophet saying and they took the thirty pieces of silver the price of him that was valued to increase that was put in a bushel did value and gave them to the potter field as the Lord appointed. Here we see that even the name of the field field name was included in the price that was the price of those the most important thing of the matter here. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 53 verses 3 and 5 to to 8. despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and of the sea, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. And verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Weighed, and the Lord had laid on him the iniquity. 
cities of the twelve. He was the first who was afflicted yet healed the mouth of death. He was brought in bonds and afflicted and as a sheep before his shears is dumb so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and put in prison and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of creation from the transgression of my people for to speak. This chapter is a well-known prophecy of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. He sacrificed that he made for me. Powerful Gospels tell us Tell the story in a little different way, but today we will look at Matthew's version of the event. Matthew chapter 7, 27, verses 28 to 30. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. These verses do not cover it all, but point I would like for us to focus on is that Isaiah prophesied not only what would physically happen to Jesus, but he would he also said that for our sins and yet they did not see it. Do we really understand what our sins have caused? Do we care how expensive it was and is for us to say a little bad amen for life to be without seeing remorse for being wrong. God knows everything. We have clear streams both to heal the prophecies that were fulfilled in the life of Jesus. Thus there are some other prophecies that God has not yet fulfilled or some that may yet come, but we are waiting for the time when both times will be fulfilled. Let's look at four of them. The first one is Nahum chapter 1, verse 4. spoke at him, and the hills melt, and the earth was burned at his presence, yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Our next verse is in Joel chapter 1, verse 16. The verse on the PowerPoint is wrong. It's chapter 1, verse 15. Alas for the days 
for the day of the Lord is at hand, and as destruction from the Almighty shall it come. And then chapter 2, verse 10. Also wrong in Alton is chapter 2, verse 20. The earth shall quake before him, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shine. And the last prophecy is in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The Lord shall the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. These are all talking about different aspects of when Jesus is coming back, what will happen in the earth because of the other prophecies that they will come to and have to happen. God is trustworthy, trust him. In conclusion, in conclusion let us go back to our story in Luke 24. Thirty to thirty-three, and it came to pass, pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake and gave to them, and their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he them out of their sight. And they said to one another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them. There they are, sitting at the table with Jesus, and they finally see that it is him. Their great sorrow turns to immense joy. And even after their dying, they, and even though they were desolate and emotional, they rushed to tell the disciples that they had a new ruler. What about you? Are you... Are you that overjoyed that to know that God knows has told us what would happen and promised never to leave us or forsake us? Will you tell somebody the good news? Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for using me to preach today help us to be your word and thank you for this time in jesus name amen
pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for visiting us today. Lord, we again have shown your love in us. Lord, as the song that we sang right now, you have found us by your stripes, Lord. You have told us about your love. We ask, O oh God, that you will continue to help us to dwell and meditate upon your love as we go out of here. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.